Good morning, Loganites. Today, we are in the beautiful island of Oahu, and we are going free diving. So today, I'm gonna show you everything you need to do, have, and just options, if that's something you're looking to do. As you're gathering your gear together, you don't need crazy stuff. You can go ahead and just buy like a $30 kit from Walmart, and then add a few extra essentials to it to make it that much better. But I'm gonna show you my kit today, and if that's something you're into, I bought it from eBay really, really cheap. So check eBay, bid for it. You don't have to spend a ton of money, but the quality does count if you just buy it used. So your bare necessities, first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need fins. Okay, you have to have fins or else you're not going anywhere. And you need a snorkel and a mast setup. I don't ever go diving without a dive knife. It's just a simple dive knife you can get anywhere. And the main thing is that it's stainless steel and at the bottom of it, it lets water out and it has straps on it because don't be me and lose your friend's knives. I'm so sorry, Steven, by taking it out there scoop or snorkeling, okay? If it doesn't have straps, you will lose it. Be careful. The reason why I always bring a dive knife is because you don't know if you're gonna get caught in anything under the water. It's not necessarily for protection because I mean, if you don't bother the marine life, it usually doesn't bother you. But what you don't really know if there's gonna be a net that you get caught on or your friend gets caught on. And that's kind of the key. You never know what's gonna happen if you need to cut somebody out. And when you need it, you need it. The other thing that's like a tip and a trick, if you have a mustache or a beard, do not let anyone tell you that you have to cut it. Instead, just get you some petroleum jelly and you're gonna take it and you're gonna smear it all over your face, okay? Right here where the seal touches your beard and that way you don't have to trim anything and you get a good seal. This says lotion. It's not lotion. What it is is it's fabric softener that we bought in Mexico and it's just simple basic fabric softener. This is a great uh, defogger if you can't buy like real defogger. You can also, instead of doing that, you can take a lighter and burn your, uh, your glass. Be careful that you don't melt your rubber. Burn your glass and then wash it off. It really does help cut down on the fog. Or if you're out in the water and having issues, just spit into your goggles and then wipe it out. The whole thing is you wanna coat the glasses in something that water can't stick to. And if you accomplish that, that's your default. The last thing that I'm gonna throw in my bag before we go out here to go free diving is a sun shirt. It's just a simple sun shirt because here's the thing. I'm white, I burn real bad, and you know you should wear sunscreen, right? However, sunscreen's not great for the reefs. So you can use reef safe sunscreen, but it's also expensive. So in my mind, it's better to introduce less sunscreen, even though it is reef safe, use a sun shirt instead of all the sunscreen and just put a little bit of sunscreen on like the top of my hands and my back and my legs, just so that I don't introduce so much extra stuff to the reef. A big part of free diving is how long you can hold your breath. So I brought an expert diver with us. This is Mr. Benjamin McLean. He is going to teach us a breathing exercise to actually extend our breath hold time underwater. That breathing exercise you should do well in advance of your actual diving day. Which we're doing. Breathe for a minute, then you hold your breath for 15 seconds. Then you hold your breath, then you breathe for 45 seconds and hold for 15. And then you breathe for 30 seconds, hold for 15. So on and so forth until you get all the way down to exhale, one breath in and hold for 15 seconds. And then once that's easy, you bump it up, let's say 10 seconds. So then you'd be at 25 seconds. And if that's too hard, bump it down by five. And you just figure out until whatever's easy until you work your way up until you can get a minute two minute, three minute breath hold. So we shouldn't do this on our way to the snorkel or the free dive spot. Especially not the driver. Um, oh yeah, that's a good point. What if I pass out? <laughs> the whole point of torture testing your body with the breathing exercises is because we are CO2 driven breathers as people. That means we don't breathe because we have too little oxygen we breathe because we have too much co2 building up in our lungs so if you can get your body used to higher levels of co2 you can hold your breath longer hey like subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we make another loganite eat your corn on the cob video if you look over here this right over here 
is the entry point. So that beach over there, you get in there and then you swim the entire way out where all those people are. And it should be the warm water outlet of the local electric company. So if you look over here, you can see the smokestacks of the actual electric company and then it cools the stuff down with water and then there's big pipes putting out the warm not pollution water into the ocean and the fish love it so we're going to swim out there and go see if we can find us a sea turtle all the way over so that's a lot and then we're all just standing there and then finally he goes and then it yeah he tipped down and then we got like halfway down he like leveled out like a parachuter and then just Snuffled hovered right back, right back in the same spot that's cool very cool apparently i just got in the ocean with chapstick in my pocket because i found it washed up ashore when we came back so double check your pockets even after you've already double checked your pockets make sure you didn't leave anything in them and also if people lose their stuff from their pockets, I'm talking to you, pick up the things you find in the surf. So he did two for one on this. True, because I didn't know if it was my <laughs> chapstick or not. I picked it up either way. Until after the fact. And I found out after the fact it was my chapstick. When you go out here diving, you have to clear your ears and that's kind of your limit for going down. So you, you torture test your body to hold against all the CO2 that builds up in your lungs. The next thing you have to do, as you go down in the water, your atmospheric pressure goes up. At 10 meters or 33 feet, or 33 and some change feet, your atmospheric pressure doubles. So the amount of air in your lungs and the air in your ears divides by half. So as you're going down, the air compresses and the water pushes in on your eardrum and that's what the pain's actually from. So the better you can clear your ears, the deeper you can go down. That's a factor on top of being able to withstand the excess CO2. For me, my best way to clear my ears is as I'm going down, I kind of open my jaw like a like I imagine a snake does to open it up, and I can feel it pop and the pressure equalize. However, I've been having a sinus issue, so lately I've had to actually hold my nose and blow really hard. I usually don't have to do that, but Ben tells me that's normal for him to have to clear his ears like that as he goes down. Yep. It's the same kind of concept as when you're flying in a plane and chewing gum. That motion will help you equalize the pressure. That is how you free dive. Remember, always keep, keep your corn, corn on, on the, the cob. cob. Woo.